How you doing everybody? Welcome back to Stand Focus for Jesus. Hope each and every one of you are having a blessed day in the Lord. Jesus Christ is always. Um, not gonna be a long video, I don't think, but you know, you speak as the spirit leads you. And um, as you see from the, the title of it, whatever I'm going to um title it, the reason why I don't really collab with other ministries. And the number one reason is doctrine. The number one reason is, is doctrine. I am big on doctrine because the Bible is big on doctrine. We talk about doctrine, we talk about teaching, we talk about what we believe as believers. And when I look at other people that are collabing with other people, and I listen to what both parties are saying, their doctrine, it clashes. And so I'm like, well, why are you collabing with somebody that doesn't believe the same thing that you believe in all doctrine? Because the Bible says that if two are not agreed, then they can't walk. And you may say, well, you're going to have differences in doctrine. Well, that's not what the Bible teaches in regards to true believers. You're going to have differences in doctrine when there are heresies and people are not who they profess to be. The word of God that y'all say y'all believe it talks about one spirit being led by one spirit, one mind, one baptism, one Lord who is Lord and father of us all. Um, the spirit that guides us and leads us in all truth. Now we can have different ways that we say things, but our doctrine is supposed to be the same across the whole board amongst the whole body of Christ. Um, we got Matthew, we got Mark, we got Luke, we got John. And they say the same thing in their own way, but they don't contradict each other. The prophets of old say the same thing that the, the uh, what we call the New Testament prophets, they say the same thing that, that they're saying, but they say it in a different way. And then sometimes they even quoted, quoted uh, verbatim. Nothing I'm saying contradicts anything that the any of the prophets or people of God, true people of God, has said. And so why would I want to collab with somebody whose doctrine doesn't line up with mine? And so when you have the difference of doctrines, then somewhere in there, you don't have the leading of the Holy Spirit because we are all supposed to have the same doctrine, the same beliefs, because it's the Spirit who's guiding us and leading us in the understanding of doctrine, the understanding of uh, the beliefs of the faith. One judgment that we speak all the same thing doesn't mean that we are like the Mormons or or or, or the um, the other ones, where no matter where they are preaching at on a Sunday, they're pretty much all preaching and teaching the same thing. Now, if that's the structure that works best then that's the structure that works best. But regardless, if you come to our ministry and I'm preaching one thing and you go to somebody else's ministry and they're preaching something different, our doctrines, if we're being led by the Spirit, shouldn't contradict each other because that means that one of us is not being led by the Spirit and they are heresies. And that's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. Paul got on the professing believers for that. So that's the main reason why I don't really collab with uh with um other you know other ministries like that. Um, you know, you may see other ministries collabing with other ministries, which you know it's all you know it's all marketing, really it's marketing. Um it's not it's not bad because it's you know it's just smart dudes wise. If you can collab with another ministry, then you can cross promote and then you can the whole point is to hopefully get their viewers, their subscribers onto your channel. That's really the whole the whole purpose because the more viewers and subscribers that you have, or the more subscribers you have, then it's supposed to be the more views that you get. The more views that you get, then obviously the more people you have to share the videos and get the information out there. Nothing wrong with that. But as for me, I'm not about to do it. If I do it, then I'm going to really, 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 really vet you. Because I've 
kind of done it in the past and it didn't work out too good when they started going off left field and some other doctors. So I'm real careful about that. Another reason, um, that's the main reason, but another reason is because the Bible says that if you're not, if they're not against us, they're for us. So some of you may be like, we well, need to clap with so-and-so, or, you know, I want to see you on this show, show or whatever. Um, I will if I'm led by the spirit, but don't look for it. I'm doing my thing. I'm doing what the Lord's called me to do. If he called me to do that, then I will do that. But I'm still preaching the gospel. I'm still preaching the gospel. Just me. I'm not trying to help somebody else build their ministry that I'm not sure about. Because by me going that route, it's kind of like me putting my stamp of approval on you saying, yeah, I vouch for this person. And there are not a lot of people that I really vouch for personally in regards to believers. And most of those people I vouch for, I speak to them on the phone. Um, and they do ministry and, and, and everything or whatnot. So that's another reason, you know, I'm, I'm doing what the Lord has called me to do. So that's not something the Lord has really called, uh, called me to do. And the third reason, and no particular order, it could be the second reason, but the number one reason is doctrine, obviously. Doctrine, 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 doctrine. People say, oh, it sh that shouldn't stop you from fellowshipping with believers. Well, you're lying because that goes against the scriptures. Uh, what a person believes, their doctrine absolutely should stop you from fellowshipping with them. Let's take it even further. If there's doctrine that I'm preaching that you don't agree with, then you need to probably step aside and dig deeper into that doctrine and see what God says on it. You know, you might be like, well, this is new to me. I don't know if I agree with that. And then really step back and let the Lord lead you before you continue into, okay, I'm going to continue to listen, continue to listen, continue to listen. But then you're having doubts because now you're going to have doubts about everything. You're going, to, you're going to start doubting everything that I put forth. But yet, everything I put forward prior to that has been solid, has stood the test of time and continued to stand the test of time. So if somebody that I'm, I, I support, I'm like, you know, I ain't, I ain't too sure about that. I step back. You see these false people, they ain't going to tell you that. They're going to say, hey, we need to come together no matter what. But that's not what the Bible teaches. Something I don't understand, that's just my growth. I'm letting you know how I, ha I have grown and I'm giving you things that I've went through uh, that have helped me to be the man of God that I am today is that I have, I stepped back. I don't necessarily just completely write them off. I stepped back and said, okay, is it something that I'm missing? Is it something I'm missing Lord? If it comes to that majority of time, I can tell like, no, nah, they, they false, they fake. I got my eye on, on one brother, a bro, uh, Hebrew brother, or whatnot. And, um, you know, he's, He's saying, he's saying some things that are red flaggish. And he has a nice little following and says stuff like, oh, see, this is why y'all don't, you don't, if a, pretty much he says, if a person doesn't have a lot of views, then that's the problem because they're not legit because he's getting a lot of views. I'm like, well, actually the Bible says the opposite. Now it doesn't mean that just because a person has a lot of views or doesn't have a lot of views that they are legit or fake, but there is a, how, what's the right word? How do I explain it? There are people out there that are legit that get a lot of views, but they are small and few. And there are people out there that don't get a lot of views and they are legit. And there are people that get that don't get a lot of views and they're not legit. There are people, there are more people that get a lot of views and have a lot of subscribers that are not legit. than there are people actually that get a lot of views. that have a lot of subscribers that are legit. I don't get a lot of views. You may say, well, you got 8,000 subscribers. Well, I got 8,000 subscribers because like everybody else, for the most part, I started from scratch. 
and I've been preaching for five plus years, but not all 8,000 people listen to the videos, the sermons constantly. Some people may subscribe and they go about their life or whatever. Obviously, you know, the ratio, you're like, okay, if you got 8,000, you should get more views. And some of you have come to me, you, you, um, you've said that you have found this ministry. You say, man, the stuff you be preaching and teaching, you should have more views, you know, but it's a good thing that I'm not getting a lot of views because it proves a point because people don't like me. People don't like me because I truly have the spirit of God dwelling in me. I'm not a people pleaser. I'm not going to take the side of black people simply because they're black and black people hate that. They hate if I will, if I defend a white person, it's, Oh, phew, phew, see you, you're cooning or whatever, but this white person is walking in righteousness. They, they hate that. Then you got white people that hate, the fact that, you know, I speak about Israel and all these different things, that Israel isn't the people over the land. They, they hate that. So I'm hated all the way around. But guess what? I'm in good company. And I will take that any day, all day, every day to be in the company of the people in the scriptures. The hall of faith that you hear me talk about than to be in the, uh, the company of the people of the world. And so when you start to speak against Christianity as a whole and you're not specific that you are denouncing Western Christianity, then, you know, I have a problem with that. Because Christianity isn't based off of what the white man says or anything, any other thing of this nature or what Western Christianity has said or what it does is based off of Christ. And if you look at Christianity, it deals with Christ and the things that believers do and the things that govern us as a collective body that's termed Christianity. I can't speak for everybody else, but when I'm talking about Christianity. I'm talking about biblical Christianity centered and focused on Christ, Christ being the chief cornerstone. I ain't talking about Western Christianity. So I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to differentiate. But what I see a lot of people doing is, Oh, th see, this is why we, we got away from Christianity. Well, what are you talking about? You got away from Christianity. So you're not a Christian anymore. You're not a follower of Christ. Cause that's what Christian means. We've broken that down many times. You're like American. What was, what do you mean? You're not an American anymore. No Technically, if you're born in America, you are American. Now you can denounce your American ship or whatever. You're like, you can denounce your Christian ship. So you're not a follower of Christ no more. I'm not a follower of America. So yes, I can say that I'm an American, but technically I don't identify as an American because I don't, I don't identify with the American way. Are oh, you understand what I'm saying? So when you start to denounce Christianity, then it's kind of like, well, you're not denouncing Christ because there is no Christianity without Christ. Just because you're claiming to be a Hebrew doesn't mean you have to, doesn't mean you have to denounce what we call, what we term and we call Christianity, biblical Christianity. Now you can denounce Roman Christianity, uh, um, Catholic Christianity, Western Christianity, all these different things. But when you're talking on, in totality that you are denouncing Christianity, you know, that raises red flags for me and some other things. Um, because I'm a Christian by faith. Yes, I'm a Hebrew by blood and everything, but I'm also a Christian by blood, by the blood of Christ. You say, well, how can you be both? The same way I'm a father, the same way I'm a father, but I'm also a husband. The same way I'm a father, a friend, a husband, a pastor, a man, a mechanic, a, 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 um, a auto repair person. I can uh, do body work. I can repair and paint a vehicle the, the same way. What do you mean? <laughs> I can be all those things. I didn't know that I was incapable of not being all those things. I didn't know I was incapable of being a Christian and also being a Hebrew of the flesh. I didn't know I was incapable of identifying with Jews who are grafted in that turn themselves as Christians because they can't be physical Jews, which is why you have the term Christian that identifies both Jews in Christ and Gentiles in Christ collectively as the body of Christ. That's what the term is about. I didn't know I, I couldn't identify with that. In the same way a person identified with the, the boule and the, the alpha and um the, you know and the, the Greek and you know, uh, sororities and fraternities, stuff like that. They identify with those groups and they identify with another group. When I was growing up, I was in the FBLA, Future Business Leaders of America. And I was in other groups when I was in high school. 
I identify with the FBLA because I wanted to be a business person. Oh, what happened? I'm a business person now. <laughs> I'm a businessman, so I can't be a businessman and be other things. You see what I'm saying? So let me ask you this before I get ready to close it out. Was John the Baptist popular? Let me give you a minute to think about it. More so a few seconds. Was John the Baptist popular? No, John the Baptist was not popular. How many disciples did John the Baptist have? He didn't have a lot of disciples. John the Baptist got his head cut off. Was, were any of the disciples of Jesus, were any of them popular? Was Stephen popular? No, Stephen wasn't popular. He got killed by Saul, who eventually got converted. Um, and then the people hated him too. When Jesus was walking this earth, physically walking this earth, was he popular? Did the people like him? No, they didn't. They hated him. That's what the Bible says. The world, the world hated me, then they will also hate you. Well, you may say, well, Jesus had 12 disciples, but he also had some other disciples. And most of those disciples that we consider other disciples, they left him. We know about the 12 that he identified with because he had a small group. Yes, there were other disciples, but they eventually left him when he challenged them. Because if they were really disciples, they would have continued with him. So I'm not saying that he didn't have any other disciples outside of the 12 that weren't legit. But if he did, they were still small in number. And the focus obviously was not on them. Point being, Jesus' own people hated him. The world hated him. The Gentiles of his time hated him. His own people hated him. Did Jesus' people love him? Did they receive him or did they reject him? Overall, Israel as a nation rejected him. So the scripture tells that when the scripture tells that that which is highly esteemed amongst men is abomination in the eyes of God. So how much more with Israel when Israelites are highly esteeming other Israelites? And they have this following of Israelites that are following them. What does that tell us? They are being highly esteemed amongst their own people. And that's a red flag. When the prophets of old, they came to Israel, did they, did Israel want to hear what they had to say or did they hate what they had to say? I'll give you a second to think about that. Okay, you got your second. They hated it. They hated what they had to say. So all throughout the Bible, from Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation, all those who are of physical Israel that were truly sent by God to the people, the people hated what they had to say overall. They hated what Jesus had to say overall. They rejected Jesus like they rejected the prophets of old. So when you see Israelites and they have this a cult-like following. And the people love, all the people overall, love what they have to say. That's a red flag. Because we don't see that in the Bible. When the true prophets of God spoke, the people of Israel hated what they had to say overall. So much that they were killing them. And they were trying to do any and everything to get rid of them. Even lying against them. So how is it you have these Israelite ministries out here and they have these great followings and the people are listening to them and they actually love them overall. But they're saying that they have the spirit of Christ dwelling in them. But when Christ spoke to his own people, his people rejected him and hated him because he spoke the truth. But now all of a sudden that's supposed to have changed. But yet the Bible doesn't say that it was going to change. It says it was going to get worse. That if you speak the truth and you truly have the spirit of Christ dwelling in you, that the people will hate you because they hated Christ first. But what I see is these Israelites that are following these other Israelites, they don't hate them. They love them. 
but they claim to be preachers and ministers of the gospel. So that's a red flag because you're popular amongst your own people when Christ wasn't even popular amongst his own people. But if I say something like that, then I'm in the wrong, but yet I'm in a line with the word of God. So this is why I don't, you know, jump on that bandwagon and, and, and do that and collab with other ministries, uh, you know, have them on and stuff like that because they're untrustworthy. They're untrustworthy. They continue to show me and Hey, it's, it's my decision. If you want to do things differently, then you can do things differently. But it's my decision. And I see where the Lord is showing me that they are untrust, untrustworthy. And I sit back and I watch them like, if what God is really showing me is true, then they will be exposed. And eventually it always ends up coming to pass. They end up being exposed. And then nobody makes a video about them. I go looking for videos and you know, um, nobody makes a video. And then I have to go make a video. And then Everybody comes out the woodworks and is upset because I'm speaking the truth, like Stephen Darby. Everybody praising this man, but that goes against the Bible. That which is highly esteemed amongst men is an abomination in the eyes of God. People love Stephen Darby, like love him. You can't say you can't say nothing against him. He can do no wrong. But the people hated Jesus. But Stephen Darby claimed to be or claimed to be preaching about Jesus. But people overall didn't hate him. How does that work? Because that's what Jesus said. Jesus said that if the world hated me, it would hate you. So which one is it? You can't sit and say that Jesus said that and then say, oh, no, 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 no. It doesn't. It, he's exempt from that. Stephen Darby and whoever else, uh, Pastor Omar, to both school Hebrews is exempt from that. You can't you can't sit there and say that, that they are exempt from it. If Jesus said that the world would hate you and Jesus' own people hated him, Israel's, uh, Israel hated Jesus, then what makes you think that they are exempt from the same thing when that's what Christ said? That you would be persecuted and hated for his name's sake. Stephen Darby and Omar and many others, they were not persecuted and hated for the name of Christ. They were loved by their own people. And they still are loved by their own people. But I'm hated because I speak against these people. I think I take that. I think I take that all day, every day, because I think I'm in pretty good company. If I look at the actual scriptures, because I believe the scriptures, I think I'm in pretty good company. So I'm never going to have a lot of views um, overall because of the way I preach and because the spirit is truly in me. Because I'm convicting anybody comes to me, I'm, I'm here to convict all through the spirit. We ain't showing no favoritism because you are Hebrew Islam, because you look like me, because you're black. We ain't showing no favoritism because, hey, I'm going to side with white people because I don't like my own people, whatever. I don't care. We're going to judge righteously. We're going to judge according to the word of God. And so in conclusion, I tell you all these things so you can pay attention to people. Pay attention to what's going on. You say you believe the Bible. But then you're reading it and then you see the same thing going on. Like, hold on, huh? Jesus said this right here. So who you going to believe? You're going to believe Jesus that you're professing or you're going to believe these other ministries that are popular? Just continue. They can do no wrong. They can do no wrong. You, you can't say nothing about any of these people. I don't care if somebody say something about me. You just be ready for the backlash if I do come back. And if you want to say something back at whatever I say, then that's your right. But it's not going to change nothing. <laughs> it ain't going to change nothing. Because you ain't got no real power. I'm preaching the truth and you got a, you got a problem with it. You hate me because I'm, I'm preaching the truth. I take that. Only thing that's going to change me is the truth. But if you ain't legit, I'm not going to take you serious anyway. A brother and sister that's legit coming to me and say, hey, Brother King, let me ask you about something because I know how you are. I know if you do something, you say something, you do it for a reason. So let me ask you about this. Why would you do this or why would you say this? Because, you know, I wasn't really feeling that. And then I will explain myself. Okay, 
let me explain myself. And if they don't agree with it, they'll let me know. Or they'll say, okay, I see what you're saying, but let me give you the wisdom I do have. And because I respect them as a brother or sister in Christ, I'm going to take heed to what they have to say. You see what I'm saying? But if I don't take you serious, then why would I take heed to what you got to say like that? Now, I'm willing to listen with what you have to say. And if it's something like, okay, I can use that, then good. But it don't mean that we are buddy-buddy now. When you still have deceiving people, you just said what you had to say. So, you know, this is why I don't, um, I don't collab with, with, with other ministries like that. I'm doing what God has called me to do. Uh, most of these ministries out here, I don't trust them because what they're doing doesn't line up with the word of God. Uh, they too popular to, they too popular for me. Uh, they're too friendly for me. They friendly with everybody. Um, the people that's coming on, on their, um, on the ministries or whatever, they too friendly with them. Uh, they too wishy washy with their doctrine. You know, y'all know how I preach. If I'm going to preach, I'm going to preach. I'm going to preach it boldly. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to sit here and be, you know, wishy washy. I'm going to preach what I do know. What I don't know, I'm going to come back to it later when I do have an understanding. If I don't have that understanding, then hey, then I leave it alone. I just speak on what I do know. But I'm not going to be wishy-washy in my doctrine. Like, how does that instill faith when if I'm not even confident and you can't be confident in what I'm preaching, then how is that going to instill confidence in you? You know, it's just, it just, it just common sense to me. Like, you don't even believe, it's like if my wife is going in the kitchen cooking something and she ain't got no confidence that it's going to be good, then when she make it, I'm going to be like, you know, she she's not instilling any confidence in me. And that's going to be reflected in her food. Even if she is confident, and obviously, you know, confident and not prideful with it, but even if she is confident and the food doesn't come out the way that she expected it, then, you know, I'm still like, okay, I can respect that. Because let me give you the wisdom to help you to do better next time. The food was good, but you need to adjust your salt level or justice or adjust that. So the quality is still going to come forth because if you're in the kitchen and you know, those of you that are cooking that you, that you bake, you know, this you're confident that that cake or whatever it is going to come out good because you already put in the work for it to come out good. You know, the recipe, you make this recipe 50 times. You make you make this cake 50 times. Your mama and your grandma used to make this cake. They passed the recipe down to you. So, you know, it's solid. How you know it's solid? Because the fruit speaks for itself. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So when I'm getting in the kitchen, kitchen and I'm cooking up something, um, and I'm following a recipe that I've made many, many times. I'm confident that it's going to be good. And even if I freestyle it, you know, we, we <laughs> y'all, y'all know how we do. We get in the kitchen, we freestyle, we just finna do something. We ain't doing no measuring, bow, 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 bow. You know, it's gonna be good. Why? Because you know what goes with what. You can be good with cooking with basic ingredients. Uh salt, a good amount of salt, some onion powder, some garlic powder. And you good. And you know, so you might want to throw in some Italian season. You stick to those basic and some pepper. Gotta have your pepper. You stick to that, those basic flavors, and season your food, your food, your food gonna be good. When you start to try to do all that crazy stuff and you don't know what you're doing, that's how it's gonna come out bad. Because you're mixing stuff that ain't supposed to be mixed, or you're not balancing it right. You see what I'm saying? But for those of us who get in the ki kitchen, we freestyle and stuff. We can do that because we know what we're doing. We can add a little bit of this, add a little bit of that. Like, okay, uh, uh, it's too salty. So uh, how are we going to make this less salty? We're going to add something to it to take up for that salt. Or we're going to dilute it with some water. Or we're going to put a little sugar and put a little water and add something to it. And then we're going to re-season it again. There's many ways you can do it. Those of you that cook, bake, you you know this. There's ways you can get around stuff when you have messed something up. And even when you have made a cake for fit, you made a cake fifty times. You like, 
man, this cake didn't come out right. What happened? Oh, I forgot to put this. Or I forgot to put that. Or oh, my oven wasn't set right. I didn't preheat my oven. I thought my oven was preheating. Or oh, my oven was my oven was tilted. I didn't know my oven was tilted. Now my cake is lopsided. So you get under there, you lift the oven up, you put a little piece of cardboard or whatever to make, you know, come on. Nah, don't act like y'all don't know. Don't act like you don't know. So, um, we, we, we are confident in what we are, we're preaching because the fruit speaks for itself. I got over a thousand videos on YouTube. The fruit speaks for itself. The fruit speaks for itself. My labor of love speaks for itself. And so with these ministries, the fruit is speaking for itself and I don't like it. I, nah, I like to use quality ingredients. When I'm baking, whatever, I don't use uh, white table sugar. I use organic sugar. When, I'm, when I need a lemon, I'm using fresh lemon juice. I'm not using the concentrate because it got all these preservatives in it. I don't need all that. I don't need you to put preservatives in my lemon juice. Or I go sp spend the extra money and get some full five dollar bottle of lemon juice. So the one recipe that's ten dollars to make end up being thirty or forty dollars. That's just me. I do it physically and I do it spiritually. Quality ingredients, quality doctrine. You want to know stuff, but then you don't want to learn. You want to know, you want to discern, whatever, but then you don't want to learn what you're supposed to learn. I'm teaching you. Just pay attention and apply it. And you will see what I'm what I'm showing you through the spirit. You'll be like, oh, I get it now. But if you're not applying, you're not willing to take heed to what I'm saying, then how you how you gonna receive what I'm saying? How you gonna see? So um I'm gonna go ahead and close it out because my wife wanna go take pictures and stuff. So, you know, I gotta go take family pictures. <laughs> but um yeah. That's all I got to say about that. Um, yeah. God bless each and every one of you in Jesus Christ's name as always. Stay focused for Jesus. And as you know, the truth is not debated. It is declared.